Hi everyone, this is Mr. Neil Writer here, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. This is of a patient who attended with a Pseudomonas bacterial uh, ear infection of the outer ear, so we call that Pseudomonal otitis externa. They had this confirmed by an ear swab taken at their GP practice. Quite often, um, when you've got an ear infection, uh, ear swabs are taken by the nurse um, at the GP practice just to confirm the presence of either a bacterial or fungal infection. Uh, that's for the reason if you have a fungal infection and you're treated with antibiotics it's not really going to help and vice versa and uh, they have been prescribed some antibiotics because of the pseudomonas ear infection but prior to um, taking these antibiotic drops they were recommended to visit myself to have as much debris cleared as possible and that allows the topical antibiotics to work their magic because they can come in contact with the canal wall. If you've got all this pus and debris, quite often the antibiotic drops can't penetrate uh, deep into the ear, and so they're less effective. And then the patient can um, sometimes require a second dose of antibiotics, uh, which is never advisable because one of the really important things is that uh, we don't become immune to taking these antibiotics uh, or the bacteria themselves don't mutate enough to evade the antibiotics that are currently available. So I'm just performing microsuction here and in cases like this or even if it was earwax I always trying to create a path to the eardrum so uh, the major symptom of the patient is obviously an inability to hear and if I can first of all just clear the eardrum so sound waves can uh, reach the eardrum and vibrate the eardrum and these vibrations can then be transmitted via the three ossicles that are attached to the eardrum so the three middle ear bones and they are the hammer bone also known as the malleus the anvil bone which is the middle bone also known as the incus and then the last bone the smallest bone in the body which is most commonly known as the stirrup bone but medically it's known as a stay piece so when sound waves hit the eardrum the eardrum vibrates and these vibrations are transmitted through the three ossicles and the stay piece bone is connected to the cochlea which is the organ of hearing and when the stay piece bone vibrates it causes fluid so inner ear fluid that is contained within the organ of hearing the cochlea to then travel in waves and these waves of fluid then travel over little sensory microscopic hair cells that are contained within the organ of hearing and when these little hair cells themselves shear side to side in response to the movement of the fluid they produce an electrical potential an electrical signal which is then transported up the hearing nerve so the eighth nerve the auditory nerve to the auditory cortex in the brain and our brain can then process and recognize this as sound. So already I can see some of the eardrum and the patient already felt as though the hearing had dramatically improved. But I'm just using a fine end here, a fine end suction process, less power because we are making contact, literally kissing the surface of the eardrum. I always prefer to use the less powerful suction probe uh, for several reasons. It's less noisy for the patient. So when we perform micro suction, it can be quite noisy. Um, so with the fine end um, there's less section power and therefore less noise in addition if we do um, come in contact with the eardrum um, you're less likely to cause trauma compared to the standard size uh, standard size on the suction pro and also with the fine end it allows you for more precision when we're working delicately like this on the eardrum we want as much precision and accuracy as possible because we don't want to perforate this patient's eardrum in addition, because this patient's ear is quite swollen, and I, I will show you in a particular part of the ear later on in the video where it is quite uh, swollen, uh, that actually did somewhat impact my ability to reach all parts of the ear because when you've got a swollen ear canal, and the ear canal already is uh, twisty and bendy. We don't, our ear canals are, are not, or the majority of our ear canals, are not straight cylindrical tubes. They have bends and twists and narrowings and widenings. And that can make the ear quite difficult at times to work inside because the ear canal already is a, a narrow tube, a narrow orifice. An average width of an ear canal is around six to seven millimetres and the average height of the ear canal 
is between 0.8 and 1 millimeter in, in, in height. So the ear canal is naturally uh, oval shaped as opposed to spherical and round. And we have a, a bend just near the entrance of the ear canal. We call that the first bend. Um, it's probably about half a centimeter into the ear canal, followed by a second bend about a further centimetre into the ear canal. And these bends give the ear canal a, a sigmoid shape, so an S-bend, like a snake. And it's believed that the reason for that, it helps protect the eardrum from any foreign object or body that may enter the ear. So if the ear canal is completely straight, then anything that enters your ear has a, a, a direct line of sight towards the eardrum. But whereas when you've got uh, your ear canal meanders and bends, these bends protect the eardrum from direct contact to any foreign bodies that may enter the ear. Um, so that can make it quite tricky at times. Um, and of course, when you've got a patient with swelling in the ear canal, they exacerbate these bends and the patient's just got one near their second bend. And you will see that a bit later on. So, so far, making good progress. We're not going to get every little last piece of debris out. Um, we'll be there all day. Already at this stage, I'm quite pleased with what we've done, but I just wanted to remove a bit more if possible, especially at the roof of the ear canal. And so here we're just at the back part of the ear canal near the roof. We are working on the bony part of the ear canal, which is very sensitive. So again, sorry to bore you if you've been, <laughs> if you've been watching my uh, channel for a while and listening to my videos. Um, it's quite often I like to just re-explain everything because we're continuously having new subscribers and new viewers. Um, to the channel. So the ear canal can be subdivided into thirds. The outer third is made up of cartilage, whereas the inner two thirds is made up of bone. The cartilage portion of the ear canal is less sensitive than the bony part. So the bony part is extremely sensitive. You've got a thin layer of skin, uh, less than 0.1 millimeters in thickness that directly lines the bony part of the ear canal. So if you do make contact with the bony part of the ear canal, it will be very uncomfortable for the patient. Whereas the, the cartilaginous portion, the, the skin is a lot thicker. It's 10 times thicker, in fact. It's about a millimetre in thickness. And the skin that lines the cartilage has three layers. You've got the epidermis layer, which is the outermost layer. Then you've got the dermis layer, which is the, the, the middle layer. And then you've got a subcut subcutaneous layer. So these three layers of the skin combined provide a buffer effect to the cartilage. And the cartilage itself is not rigid like the bone, so that has it, that's slightly malleable. So quite often when we're working on the cartilaginous portion, we can apply a bit of pressure, we can manipulate the cartilage, we can move it side to side, up or down, because it's very well tolerated and it's not um, always uncomfortable. In fact, sometimes the patients don't even notice that we're stretching the outer part of the ear canal. But we can't do that with the bone because the bone is rigid and it's got a less of a buffer. Uh, so we're just going to be really careful. This piece of dry debris skin, it's just trapped anteriorly to the, to the front part of the ear canal and the swelling is just to the left which means I'm having to just manipulate the endoscope almost at an angle so I'm going into the ear and then I'm rotating the endoscope to to the left almost at 45 degrees to even visualize this region of the eardrum. I don't think I'd be able to visualize this with the wax scope which is the other device I've developed and also if I was using an ENT microscope or if I was using uh, magnifying loops head loops or any other device because it'd be very difficult to get around this bend um, to access that. So with the endoscope, that's when an endoscope comes into its own. The endoscope itself, it provides a, a wide field of view and that's why it's very often used now um, to perform surgery, so keyhole surgery, because of the view it provides. It's a panoramic view. And because the, the lens of the endoscope is positioned internally, so hence the name endoscope, so the, the, the magnifying lens, the optics are within the ear itself, we can guide it towards little uh, uh, trenches and ditches within the ear canal. With a microscope or the wax scope, for example, or head loops, the, the magnifying lens, the optics are external, so they can't be manipulated within the ear itself. Hence why the view provided with an endoscope is unparalleled, in my opinion anyway. So again, it was revealing more of the eardrum here, just trying to get a bit more of the inferior aspects. So this is the bottom part. Now we're just working near the centre part, near the bullseye, also known as the umbo region. So the hammer bone, it attaches to the eardrum in the centre. And this, this part of the hammer bone that connects to the eardrum is called the umbo. 
So I'm really pleased with that already, but again, I just want to see if I can get a bit more debris out. So I'm just going to the posterior portion of the eardrum. So when we say posterior, we mean to the back. If we say anterior, we mean to the front. So in the case of the left ear, this is the patient's left ear, the back part of the ear canal is to the right, and the front part of the ear canal is to the left. See, so just managing to peel a bit more crusted, infected skin off the eardrum. So now that we've cleaned the majority of the ear, it will give the antibiotics a better chance of fighting this infection and reducing the swelling. The antibiotic drops also contains steroid and dexamethasone to help reduce this, the swelling, the inflammation that's present. And the antibiotic, the, the specific antibiotic is called neomycin that this patient has. So neomycin is what we call an amino glycoside. And what um, the amino glycoside does, what the neomycin does, it doesn't kill the bacteria, but it st stops it from reproducing. It attaches itself to an organelle within the cell of a bacteria called um, a ribosome. And the ribosome has two parts. One part is reading the genetic code, and the second part is um, instructing the, the bacterial cell to go and find the different amino acids. This is the part where the ear canal is heavily swollen, so that, that's the hard, hard part to get around. So, yeah, the ribosome, um, the subpart portion, um, is then instructed to go and collect different uh, amino acids that are contained within the bacterial cell. And these amino acids are grouped together in a specific code, that's a genetic code there, to form a protein and it just helps the, the bacteria to reproduce itself. So with the neomycin, it attaches itself to a part of the ribosome which stops the, the transcription uh, phase of the, the, the reproduction of the bacteria. Um, so eventually the bacteria can't reproduce itself and it kind of almost burns itself out. Again, you can see that swelling to the left. So I'm just trying to go around that, which is quite difficult to do. And this was quite embedded. I don't think I get too much more out, if I'm honest, but we shall see. Um, key um, points to the patient is to avoid water entering the ear. The water will uh, cause this infection to get worse. Bacteria love it. You've got a warm, damp, moist environment. In fact, it probably was water that triggered this patient's ear infection in the first instance. They did report that. So there's the eardrum. And it just got a before and after shot. So that's when the patient came in. And uh, this is how it was after I finished. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Do take care. Keep well. Stay tuned. I've got loads more videos to upload in due course. And yeah, speak to you all soon. Thank you. Bye.